Okay, go ahead. Perfect. Thanks, Kevin. And yeah, I mean, this is this is really the last slide I wanted to share with you all. Um, you know, just wanted to see. You know, this is this is not every use case that fair warning can help solve. Right? These are probably just the most common ones that we see uh, across the board, um, and how we kind of classify them into different groups of you know information security practices or compliance practices. Um, obviously, there's there's other use cases around just monitoring. Um, the, the the uses and adoption of your platform and and different pages that you may create and you know monitoring who's accessing different objects you know within your your Salesforce org and making sure that pages are loading correctly um, and, and in a good amount of time as well right so um, it can really span across an organization and, and different functions um, outside of just you know user monitoring as well so. I'll kind of stop there before we we show the tool and want to just see if there's any questions from the audience um, or anything else that that can help clarify uh, before we do that. You can use the tool in um, both the US and Canada. Yes, yeah. correct. Yep. Yes, and we do data residency. So if you know, our, for our Canadian customers, they are within their province in AWS data center. So it's not your data is not in the US. It doesn't leave the province. How about some of the compliance for US are based and not really reflecting Canadian? Hmm. So that's what you are. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't. I wasn't able to catch that yeah. last piece. It's hard to hear. Was that was there a question? Uh, we happen to notice that in the in the presentation there was a lot of uh, U.S. compliance shown and less Canadian. So it was just wanted to verify that Canadian compliance was also provided. Correct. Yeah, and and we do help with PHIPAA, which is you know the big uh, health laws around in in Canada around you know monitoring health information. Um, but you know really it maps back to a ton of different compliance uh, regulations, not only in the US, but also in Canada uh, around data privacy protection. Um, and, and we can help meet those goals. I'll, I'll be happy to share with Kevin maybe some, some more documents that we could send out around just you know how it maps to, to Canadian regulations as well. There's no more questions I can stop sharing and um, I can turn it over to you, Atlas, and we can start, you know, showing a little bit about what this looks like. All right, thanks, Ian. Over here. All right, hi everyone. So I'm going to go through and kind of just bring some of the slides that Ian showed and kind of bring the life here in the fair warning application. Um, of course, just like with Ian, please jump in at any time. If you have any questions, you want to dive in more detail. Um, really a goal here is to understand like what you have what you have access to with your event monitoring logs and how a tool like Fair Warning um, can help interpret those logs and actually make them actionable um, data. So what you're seeing here on your screen is the, the Fair Warning application. Now, the way we ingest the event monitoring logs is we do it on hourly download when the uh, event logs are produced every hour, as well as Salesforce has some real-time streaming capabilities for certain actions like exporting logins as an example. And so we can, we'll ingest those actions in real time as well. And so you'll have basically all the event logs, so all the activity, people clicking into different records, all that will be loaded in, as well as all the setup audit trail data as well. So who's beginning to sign permission sets, who's changing permission sets, all those type of actions you can report on here at Fair Warning as well. All right. And the last thing I'll mention is with, with the data that's coming in, um, with with Improvada, we hold the data for the life of the partnership. So that's where that you know you saw with Salesforce natively with Shield, you get 30 days access to those logs, and then it's a rolling purge essentially. With Fair Warning, we'll keep it for the life of your contract, so that if you need to do that historic further uh, reporting that more than 30 days, you have to do that. Then that's that's why we do that. So, all right. So as the data comes in, the other last thing we're gonna download is the reference object data. So we can translate all those zeros and all the, those alphanumeric uh, codes and we can train them into English so that you can actually read them. Um, and so once all that data is here, it's then available to report. So what you're seeing on your screen is essentially a login dashboard. So you know, with our tool, it comes natively with some standard dashboards and then customers kind of customize from there. 
but you'll have things around login location. So who's logging in from, from within Canada or without, from um, outside of Canada, where are they logging in from? Great insights that you can have on your dashboard login every day. Now, the other thing I'll mention is we are fair warnings, bread and butter is really on the proactive side. So instead of coming to the dashboard and seeing if there's anything unusual, if you're not expecting any logins from other countries or certain areas, we would set up proactive monitoring to alert you right away when that occurred. So that way you're not sitting here, you know, having to log in to view that information. All right. So the nice thing too is the way we kind of uh, keep the data and store the data, it makes it very easy for further investigation. So you see, let's say logins from outside um, of Canada. If I go ahead and point and click and drill down, I can get more levels of detail about those logins. So now I have a list of who those users are from which location. And then the one that I'm concerned about, again, I can just point and click and get further detail. So here's the actual logs from Salesforce, except that we've interpreted them. So you can see that you can pretty easily read this as far as Jim had is a frozen user attempted to log in. We see what his ID is. We see what his role is within the org. We get all this information, but we also translate it so that you are able to see exactly who the user is. You don't have to go and try to reference who the global user ID is and all that. Any questions so far? All right. Actually, I had a question. Um, I'm assuming that you're, you're tracking any kind of license. So if, if for example, if these are community users, uh, you would you would be able to track that and have, would you be able to set up like unique alerts? Like, okay, I want to know if a community user is logging in from a certain country. Yes, absolutely. That, that That's a very, very easy report. So speaking of that, the use cases and, you know, Fred, you have that use case of um, community users or experienced users that are logging in from outside of, of, of unusual locations. So we can definitely set that up for you, um, no problem. Those use cases, and if anyone else has use case ideas, feel free to throw them out. I can tell you, you know, our experience with them. You know, we do have customers doing a lot of monitoring around login activity, uh, both from people that are logging in from anonymized IP addresses or frozen users attempting to log in, all that you can report on. The kind of the second nice thing is one, we're holding on your data is we have a lot of pre-built reports for you that you can then run out of the box. So you can see here that I have about 260 reports that I can run for all sorts of different scenarios. If I'm more interested in, in export behavior, I can go into the export section. You, but you can see here that these are all pre-built. So Fred, for your example, the logins from the from uh, from outside, let me find that report. Login activity with geolocation. So from this one, all I would do is add another filter to say only include the experienced users and you know, in you know anyone not in Canada, as an example. And how do you handle? Do you have any way of handling? Um, obviously, people can use VPNs. Yes. So what the logs, the logins, we the information we get is from Salesforce. So as long as Salesforce is is recording the the IPs correctly, you'll see the actual login locations. Thank you. Yeah. Let me show you. So this is, you can see an idea of more logins, right? Another thing, you know, what applications are connected to your org? Um, this is really useful. Customers love having this for, for us because you see is like applications, maybe, you know, for DocuSign example, if you no longer have a partnership with DocuSign, uh, they shouldn't be connected to your org. And so this is a great way to kind of keep track of that and make sure, okay, who has access to our Salesforce org and should they continue to have access? You can then again, being actionable data. If I see that there's an application connected to the org that shouldn't be, I now know that I've been pointed that out by, you know, fair warning as an example. Now I can go and resolve that issue. You can see trends. Again, we're going to hold this data. So we're going to build trends of what's normal login uh, volume, what's normal, you know, uh, failed login volume. And if there's anything that's out of order, we could, again, present that in the form of an alert, which I'll show you here in a second. This is going to show you some other insights that you can get. Again, there's a lot we can do here. Um, and so there's a lot of different use cases our customers bring to us, but maybe there's um, questions that you have around a particular object. Maybe you just created a new custom object and you're curious to see if your user are actually using it, or maybe you have objects that have very sensitive data. So you want to kind of get visibility into what users are interacting with that particular object and the records within those. So you can see here, I can give, you know, what are the objects being accessed? Um, you know, if I'm focused on opportunities in this case, I can see, you know, who are my most active users with opportunities, who's creating opportunities, deleting opportunities. 
I can get those insights in the form of a dashboard, or I could have this, you know, if I want to know if anyone deletes something, I can have that as an alert as well. I, I have a question. How long do these logs uh, last? So they, as far as they, they last, they last with, with fair warning, they last essentially forever. As long as you're a, a fair warning customer, all your Salesforce data will be housed in your fair warning application. Um, without fair warning, like yeah. shield natively, it's about 30 days you get. It's a rolling, it's a, it's a continuing 30 day look back period you have. You said 30 days? 30 days for shield, for fair warning, it's essentially unlimited. We hold it for the life of the, the partnership with the customer. Those are a lot of transactions. Sorry, I didn't catch that. Um, like those are a lot of transactions, so there's no limit to the data. If I to monitor a user or find out or investigate something six months ago, am I able to track down and use the data that they're showing now? Absolutely. So let's 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 use that as an example. Um, if I need to go see an, an audit and say, okay, who accessed um, a particular record or show me everything that this user accessed, and I need to see everything, we can do that. So let me go into a, one of my Sage reports here. So kind of as an example, I need to see every single person who ever ever touched this particular record. So I can just put in that name again. I this is all translated, so I can oh, search. That's amazing. And then here you go, here's all your users. And then you can filter, of course, you know, if you focus, you're more concerned about anyone that maybe a printed record, you can focus in on that. Again, it's all gonna be translated for you. Um, and then a lot of times when the action is taking place in Lightning, we get the Lightning link. So if you ever need to go directly to that report or this contact or whatever the, the, the record they're on, you can do that from, from right here. We do have a uh, SAML SSO with Salesforce. So you could go directly into your Salesforce environment. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, I don't know what to be concerned about. There would be a sickness. And I know. Was that a question about AI? But is there also in the background something I can point out? Something that I would not be aware of to look for? Those are still lots of numbers to look at. Sure. So we we so we are developing um, some additional machine learning models. Oh. That are be able to identify, to your point, exactly to find things that you aren't necessarily looking for. So we are developing that. Um, we do have some AI to really point out anomalies for, for users. So uh, since we're talking about that, let's jump into the alerts because that's where most of that applies is with the alerts piece. So in terms of what we'll do is since we're holding on to all this data, we can now develop what are normal patterns of behaviors for your users. So, you know, someone that's in a support role at this, in this org normally accesses, you know, 50 cases and 25 contacts a day. So what we'll do is all your users will be compared to their peers. And if there's an anomaly there, an alert will be generated. So I'm focusing here on opportunities, but this, think about this as exporting behavior, um, you know, unusual access to contacts, all those type of behaviors where there's volume um, anomalies, we can present those as an alert. So what you see here is I've clicked into a proactive alert. I can see that Justice here has had alerts in the past. Um, I can see she's in the service role in this org. And scrolling down, what I'll do is this yellow line is Justice's activity, right? Pretty normal, pretty pretty uh, uh, consistent. This green dash line is Justice's peers. So others in the same role or same profile, again, peers is, can be customized. Most often what's, what's used for customers is the base off the role. So just as in the service role, compare her to the other service roles. And on average, someone in the service role should be accessing opportunities about five and a half times a day. On this day, Justice accessed 58 opportunities. So big deviation, not only in her own behavior, but what's normal for that role. And so that's how we're able to, and we're doing this for every single one of your users, calculating them and comparing them to their peers and to identify true anomalies to make sure that Justice isn't just having an increased workload, it's actually a big deviation from the rest of the group. And so if I need to know what those 58, you know, opportunities that were accessed were, I just, again, point and click, you don't have to rerun reports, we get a tool like fair warning. So now I can see, okay, when were those reports accessed um, or opportunities accessed, what opportunities were they from what IP, login session key, so I can then run user activity reports. If I need to see everything Justice did that day outside of just accessing opportunities, I can do that with the click of a button with the login key.
One thing I'll know is with the alerts, you can close them, you can open investigations. We do have an investigation tool built into the application. And you can also export alerts. So if you have your own incident management tracking tool that you use, or you just need to export this out for, your, for internal needs, you can do so. Just keep an eye on the clock. I, I have other use cases I can show you, um, some pretty cool ones, but I wanna make sure that if anyone has an idea in their head or something that maybe has been keeping them up at night of like, I wonder if someone's doing this in our, in our in Salesforce, um, you know, I, I'm all ears if you wanna hear about it. So Atlas, a question, uh, how often does the sync happen from let's say Salesforce, let's say the event logs to the AWS org, if I yep. can say so. So the, the most of the, the actual event logs are downloaded on an hourly basis. That's when they're, they're available. Now the, the real-time streams come through in real time. So if okay. Salesforce is making more and more of those event, hourly event logs into real-time streams. So um, they're at 23 real-time streams compared to 56 event logs, and that's gonna keep going up. Um, you know, we expect that eventually all activity will be in real time stream, so it'll be in real time. But at the most, it'll be an hourly uh, delay for certain events. Okay, okay, thank you. I'll just add real quick too, right? Like, so we, we are a Salesforce partner, right? We've been a partner, an ISV uh, partner of Salesforce for many years now. So as they, you know, transition into more of these real time streams, you know, we're, we're aligned with them as well um, and their roadmap. So, perfect. A couple other things that maybe just for your consideration. So, login as activity. When users are logging in as a different user and performing actions, you know, typically trying to help in a support fashion. But we have, you know, our customers have found uh, inappropriate actions done by users who essentially were trying to hide under another user's address. So, what you can see here is we can definitely alert you to that. I can see that October 7th, I can see what org. Because as Ian mentioned, we can handle multiple orgs. We have some customers that have seven different Salesforce orgs and they all feed data into their fair warning application. Um, but then you can see here that Jim Taylor is the user being logged in, but I can see the delegate user is actually Josh. Again, as I mentioned, we also are gonna collect things like their login key and session key. So that allows me to see everything Josh is doing as Jim Taylor. And here with the click of button, I can see I have this report already attached that can show me that here's Josh logging in, and then logging in as Jim Taylor, and I can see everything he's done since then. So if there's anything that was unusual, like an export, I can quickly filter down onto that. All right, so now I can see that, oh, as Jim Taylor, Josh went ahead and exported um, these reports. These are saved reports, so I'm gonna get the name, but if they're an unsaved reports that they ran, then this will just be blank, but you'll still get notified that they ran a report or exported a report. And kind of how we can take these custom, you know, we can take these reports that are already pre-built and fair warning. You saw those reports and, and and kind of customize them and tweak them. Whereas if you don't really care about login as activity, but you care about login as activity that includes exporting, then we would just add additional filters. Say, hey, we really care about exporting as during login ads. I do one other one too around sensitive data exports. So. Well, you see, this, this is one of the most common use cases for our customers is they have sensitive data in their Salesforce org. And so they want to know if anyone's taking it out. Anyone that has a permission to either download that information or export it. So what you see here is Atlas Lake, 254 alerts in the past. I don't know what Improvada is doing with this guy, but if we look down here, I can see that Atlas Lake, again, from this org, exported a report called VIP Contacts. If I scroll over, I can get additional information. What, how many rows, columns, what were those columns? So, you know, for these, like these are all the columns that are in just, so I can also report off of and monitor for any reports that include a particular column that's sensitive for you. Sorry, was there a question? No. So we've talked a lot about, you know, what your kind of regular Salesforce users are doing within um, Salesforce and being able to monitor and report and audit that activity. But the other thing we're bringing in is the platform events. So this is gonna be really useful, especially for admins to kind of track where their permission sets are, who's making changes to them, where those permission sets are being assigned out to. So you can track, and a lot of customers like this uh, like to kind of use it as a safety net to ensure that correct permission sets are being assigned to the correct users 
and that we don't have over permission users. So there's a couple of ways you can see here, you know, a change in a permission set. So if I get this alert and I'm monitoring for these changes in permission sets, I can then go in and see, okay, what actions did Josh do? So I can see here all the permission set changes he made and what those changes were. So for this one around, um, so be able to transfer leads was changed from disabled to enabled. So now this user with this permission set can have that. So great way to kind of track that. Also, you know, Ian and I are working with a customer that has has gone through several Salesforce admins. And so they now have the Salesforce, multiple Salesforce orgs that have all sorts of permissions and they needed help with kind of cleaning up some of that tech debt, cleaning up the permission sets and roles. And so we can assist with that too. One thing we could do is just run a report and say, here's all your users based off role and permission and what permission sets they have. So you could see from every single one of your Salesforce users. Uh, another way you could do this, and you know, I'm going to go to a permissions dashboard, is to focus more on the high risk. So which permission sets have the ability to export or download or view all the information in your Salesforce org? This is a great way to see this from th this nice dashboard view. And then you know, if we're not expecting there to be six system admins, then we can you know, point click, see who those admins are, and remove the, the, uh, the access for the particular admin that didn't need it. So all of this, again, you're just pointing and clicking to see additional detail. You don't have to then take this and rerun it. If I need to see who these four users are that, that have this permission, permission set, I can just point and click and drill down and get that level of detail. Any other questions? Anything else that's, that's been curious that's as we've gone through this? I do. Um... If you have a report that you run every day, it's sort of monitoring uh, uh, users' activities on the on Salesforce. Did you talk about? I was sort of in and out of this meeting, so I apologize. We already covered it. Uh, but if you wanted to run this report every single day, and just if any records are selected, then it sends an email. Do you do things like that? Absolutely. So with the, the proactive alerting piece, you know, let's say, let's take our sensitive data export. If this occurred, I, this proactive alert, you don't have to go and run this ad hoc and say, okay, show me everyone that exported yesterday. Um, you can get this in real time. So we've actually had customers that we had, there was an employee that exported data and was on their way out of the building and they were able to intercept that employee with, before they were able to take that data because they got the alert so fast. So the way they got notified of that with the proactive alerts is when alerts generated, you have some options of how you're notified. So one, you'll get a notification in the fair warning application, you can get a chatter notification in your Salesforce, and you'll get an email notification as well. So you have a, multiple ways to be alerted that there's something you need to look at in fair warning. And so you'll get that notification, then you're able to act right away with, with those alerts. You also have the ability to, to customize, you know, when you want to be alerted. So there might be permission set reviews that you're going to be doing. You may only need to see that once a day, and you're just going to do that on a daily basis. You don't need to have all the notifications. But for your higher risk alerts, those are the ones you generally want to have all the notifications on so that no matter where you are, you're going to know about it. Okay. Any other questions? Anybody? Is there a... Does it work with a mobile app? Yes, it does. And we we have uh, all sorts of use cases there. We have a customer that um, they have to do surveys. And so they have all their workforce that is using Salesforce mobile. And one of their things though, is that everyone, all their employees' phones had to have been on a certain level of, soft, of, of iOS or of Android. And they had to be on a certain version of that software for security reasons. And so what we were able to do for them is have a report that would alert them anytime someone was accessing their Salesforce on an outdated phone because they were all they were all mobile because they had, they were doing door to door work. Um, so that's another thing. Like if that's a security policy that you have, and you know if someone we don't want people accessing Salesforce on out of uh, out of date devices, that's another thing. Again, probably something you would want more as a proactive alert than just as a dashboard or a report you ran ad hoc. But yes, we certainly could uh, provide feedback and insights into what's going on with mobile. Okay, any other questions before? Uh, okay, um, if you want to just wrap up your presentation, is there anything else? Sure, absolutely. The, the only other thing I was going to mention is that incident management 
tool that we have within the application. So this allows you to investigate those incidents. So if you don't have a tool like this, you can use fair warning because you can also document internal incidents in fair warning. It doesn't have to be only from fair warning alerts. Um, you know, the misdirected facts or um, you know, social media posting that had um, identifying information that shouldn't have been identifiable. Those are incidents that you can document in fair warning too. And so you can do from the, the, the important dates and filling that out to the actual resolution. And it includes things like an attachment section to upload any documentation, emails, PDFs related to that. So that way from the incident occurring, fair warning, detecting it, you documenting it in fair warning and resolving it, you kind of get the full life cycle of that, of that incident. And then that makes it very easy for your governance reporting when you have to go and report on all these um, incidents. You know, what are we monitoring for? Here's what we monitor for. Here's the results of our investigations. Anyone you need to prove that out to, to any government agency, um, any boards, committees internally, um, you can report out on the effectiveness of your monitoring program or any insights that you want to pull from fair warning with our governance tool. So with that, I'll wrap up. And thank you very much. Well, thank you, guys. So if you could uh, tell me on your slide deck, um, I will post it on our community page so that people, uh, and if you've also included your contact information, if somebody wants to contact you, um, we'll also uh, put that off on the community page. Perfect. Yeah, Kevin, I'll send that over to you uh, following this and appreciate everyone's time. Uh,